So this is Bible Hub. It's a free, free resource online. And it has all the Bibles in English from the various you know, translation, which you can read and every verse in the Bible. So if you open it, you realize that, yeah, this is an online Bible. You can plug in any verse in the Bible and read it or any chapters. And if you look up here, and in fact, any, any translation too, up right up there, and you have a strong, strong uh, concordance up here. And if you look, there is an English, a Hebrew, and, and a meaning too. And if you go into, do, 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 no, not here, interlinear. So what is interlinear? This is the most exciting part. Look at where, where is it? at inter da, 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 interlinear and there you have it genesis 1 1 chapter 1 click for the chapter and if you see here it has well don't forget it's read from right to left so you have the hebrew you have the english and then you have the transliteration right right on top. Barashit, Barah, Elohim, Et, Hashimayim, Va'et, Ha'eretz. So <laughs> you can read Hebrew. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this, is, this is free. It's on every computer. Just, just go to BibleHub.com. It's really interesting. I just discovered it. This book came for me yesterday and I look at it and I said, this is the wrong book. I don't want this book. I'm learning biblical Hebrew. Why do I need those funny script, <coughs> the pictographs, the ancient Hebrew, the Paleo Hebrew? Why do I need this funny, funny things? I only found out yesterday why I needed it because the Biblical Hebrew, albeit quite ancient, has its roots in Paleo-Hebrew. The Paleo-Hebrew with its pictographs, pictures, is the action root of the word. Our language, even the Biblical Hebrew, for example, praise or shine or, or grace, all these are abstract. But if we translate it back to its Biblical, its Paleo-Hebrew, we see the action, so it becomes more than abstract description of an action. It, it is more, and then you'll be able to appreciate it more. So I've talked about Bible Hub, which is uh, the Bible in English and every translation there is, and also Strong's Concordances there too, and also the lexicon. But you need really a ancient Hebrew lexicon. So what this does is it will give you the Hebrew, the uh, biblical Hebrew word, and then it will give you the pictograph too. The pictograph script is from the pictograph script that you know the actual meaning. For example, this word halal in Hebrew, hal halal, means praise in Hebrew. And this is how you write it in Biblical Hebrew. Hey, Lamet, Lamet. So, you know Biblical Hebrew? Hey, Lamet, Lamet is praise. So what does that mean, really? Here you see <laughs> the pictograph, <laughs> ancient or Paleo Hebrew. You see the man with arms raised and said, look, and the two shepherd's staff. It, so praise really is the shepherd leading a flock. So actually is God leading you, leading the man towards the North Star. <laughs> Do you get it? Kind of a stretch because it's strange to us because we never read like that. All our words are kind of abstract, but to 
ancient people, they read things in a different way, and that's how the Bible was written. Was written in for them in their context, in their alphabet, in their language. <laughs> so this is praise to follow God wherever He leads, and that that man is is the H in is the Hey in biblical Hebrew. And the two staff is the Lamed, 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 like I said here. So this is Biblical Hebrew. Hey, Lamed, Lamed is equal to praise or Hallel. Are you having fun? So here is the alphabet in ancient Hebrew. The first one, head of an ox. Second one, the tent, the foot. Tent door, arms raised, the man arms raised. Look, it means tent peg, the mattock. Mattock is kind of sickle. Tent wall, clay basket, closed hand, open palm, shepherd's staff, water. Water is the M. Sprouting seed is the N. And so on. Here we go. Until you have tough, the last alphabet, and that's the cross, cross sticks. Remember what the cross sticks is? Apologies. And here it is in modern or in biblical Hebrew, the Aleph, which is our A, the Beit, Gimel, Dalit, He, Vav, Zain, Het, Tet, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samek, Ayin, Pe, Zade, Kof, Resh, Shin, or Sin, and finally Taf. I'm trying to balance holding a the camera or the my uh, iPhone and opening, keeping the page open from this book I just got yesterday, and I only found out yesterday why I need to know that Paleo Hebrew, the scribbly pictographs. So here is a verse in the Bible where it says, "God Most High, Creator of heaven and earth," Genesis fourteen twenty two. When we read of of God, we have in our mind some modern modern idea, but this was written thousands of years ago to a people who who doesn't understand abstract things. They are more visceral. So when you say God, what do they hear it in? in their times? When we hear God, we know the Almighty God, Spirit. Which, who created heavens and earth. But what do the ancient Hebrew to whom this was given, what do they hear when they, you say God? So we know what it is in, so God is Al. We know it, what it is in biblical Hebrew, the Aleph and the Lamed. So what do they hear? So in the Paleo Hebrew, Aleph is the ox head, and Lamed is the shepherd's staff. So to to them, when you say God, Al, they say it's a shepherd's staff and is representative of authority as well as a yoke. So actually, and the ox head is a power is power is a powerful leader. So it's really in their minds and eyes they see a team of oxen yoked together, pull a cart or plow. So the Hebrew meaning is really a powerful leader. The ancient Hebrews saw themselves yoked to God who taught them how to walk the proper way. And we can have numerous such, such meanings to creator. In the paleo, in the biblical Hebrew, you have the kaf, nun, and hey. And in Paleo Hebrew, you see the sun on the horizon, and you see some squiggly. That's that's the noon. In Paleo Hebrew, the noon is a, a seed, a sprouting seed, and then you have the hay, the man look with arms raised, <laughs> saying, "Look." So what does that mean? Okay, and you have to pardon me. I'm balancing something. So actually. It's the ancient Hebrews see it as 
God as a bird that builds a nest, the heavens and the earth for his children. God is laying, you know, the nest, the sun, and, you know, preparing for a sprout, sprouting seed and the, for the man. And it's a picture of God preparing a world for his people. So, again, here we have Father Abba. In the biblical Hebrew, it's Aleph Beit. In the Paleo Hebrew, again, we see the ox, the Aleph, the strong ox. And you see the bait, which is a tent. So the the power behind the, the tent, Father guarding the tent, is the man powerful guarding the tent is the Father. And in this place, Mother. Aleph, Mem, Am. That's Mother. And in Paleo Hebrew, you see again the ox head, Aleph, the the tent, um, the powerful symbol, and then the water. This is Mem, the water. It's water. It signifies water. And in ancient times, they boiled animal hide to make glue. So this is anything fluid is is represented by this word. So Am um, is mother. The glue of the house. <laughs> so I have, I'm studying biblical Hebrew, but not in a formal way. I, I need to find a, a class, but there are lots of resources online on YouTube. And that's where I've been and, you know, taking a little here and there and building up my knowledge. But I like this guy, Jeff Benner. He's got lots of resources on YouTube and this book can be downloaded you can print it off in the internet on google find it on google it's you know you don't need to buy anything usually when i find an old book i try to see if there's a pdf copy and then to print it before i buy it so i i got this book my printer is kind of old and it's not doing a good job and i need to replace the printer so but i'm just telling you that there are free resources that you can print online and there are free resources on youtube too so start there it's fascinating and really interesting it takes your bible reading and understanding to a different level to the, understand that this was written to a different people at a different time different culture you have got to read it and see what what comes to their minds then and then you will realize that it's more active, you know, things are not abstract, like what we have is so abstract, and therefore our understanding and faith walk is really shallow. But once you have more active understanding with the pictographs, I used to think, what the hell, why do I need those squiggly little figures? Now I know, now I know, and it has changed my mind. And studying, and I think Martin Luther said, if I were younger, the thing I would do is, learn Hebrew 